immediately. Because uh, they were worried that uh, what are you going to do to them? Of course, all the insects, animals are very afraid of human. We are huge and we are not always human. Yes, that's the thing. And uh, even though you have become vegetarian, but it's not uh, from birth even, and even then the size of the human and the, you know, the human as a whole, we've been eating, uh, you know, the whole planet. Uh, the birds from the sky, they do us no harm. We shoot them down and eat them. The fish in the sea, they just swim in there happily and we net them up and then fry them. So just the sight of humans make everyone very afraid. Of course, it takes uh, time to know that you are not uh, harmful to them, you see, and talking to them does help. Talk to them before you remove, not after, because by then they already might have heart attack. Huh? Every time I remove some insect from my house, I tell them first, OK, calm down now, I'm going just to put you in a glass just for a few seconds or even a split second and then I'm going to free you and just please uh, stay still or go down to my level so I can get you. And then the flies, they go down and stay in where I can reach them, yes. Or some other moth or, you know, butterflies and something like that. Not all of them listen. Some of them still panic or by habit flying high, but <laughs> mostly they listen, they come down so I can reach them, because I say, if you're on the ceiling, I can't reach you. Just come down now on the table, lay there and wait. And then they do that. Yes, and they don't panic, okay? Yes. Well, my God, you can hear them screaming. You are very developed in screaming detectiveness. <laughs> you can talk to animals or just hear them screaming, that's it? No, yeah, I just I feel them sometimes, yeah. Okay, that's good. So now you know that what I told you is truth that animals do have feeling, even the snails. Can you imagine a bigger one or anyone else? It's truly, all of them have souls. It's true what you said, that uh, we can start hearing you inside or that ability, because sometimes I think of something and then the next lecture, you mention that, and so that information is out there. Okay. It's nice to know. It's nice. <laughs> well, I told you even the ants, uh, the insect, they all have pain and fear like us human. Okay, so that's good that you are vegetarian, huh? Absolutely. See, that we do no harm to these uh, innocent creatures. Told you they are just like us. <laughs> Hi. So many species are being mapped for their DNA. Because of this, the development of genetically modified food is causing many plants to not be able to reproduce. What is the fastest thing we can do to help stop these kinds of practices? Thank you. Write to the government. Write to anyone who's in power. Talk to whomever you know that doing it. Tell them the harm that genetic modified food we do to other plants and the planet in the long run. Thank you. Many countries have uh, prohibited it already, and uh, we hope that all will do the same before it's too late. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Master. Hi. The question I have is, I read recently that refined sugar uses charcoal from incinerated cow bones in order to bleach the sugar. Maybe many people aren't aware of it, but shouldn't we encourage people all over the world to boycott refined sugar in all of its forms and choose organic sugar, maple, and other forms of sweeteners? Oh, yes, of, yes, of course, if we can do that. Yes, Master. Yeah, no wonder why sugar is no good for you, apart from the, uh, you know, compound that they inherit is also this karmic burden they go with it. It's horrible. My goodness, where do they find all these uh, cow bones to, to bleach the sugar? Master, they find them in India, Pakistan, um, South America, Africa. It takes about nine pounds per cow that they use in charcoal. And I did this research. They did, on average, 
70,000 pounds of bone char per silo. The silo is 20 feet wide and 70 feet high that they push the sugar through to refine it. The technology is there and they don't need to do this. Oh my goodness. I guess they just want to get rid of the cow bones as well after they eat the meat. That's right. Oh, horrible, horrible. It just breaks my heart, Master. Horrible. Well, we have to uh, provide this information maybe on Supreme Master Television, on website or any website that you can get your hand on, okay? Yes, Master. Oh, it's horrible. Everything you eat nowadays, you feel so scared. So scared that it might relate into some cruelty of some kind. Yes, Master. Thank you for telling us this. Thank you, Master. Love to you. Yeah, we have to let people know. Meanwhile, you use a brown sugar, organic sugar, natural sugar, okay? Yes, Master. Right, or maple syrup, or fruit syrup. Use them uh, sparingly anyway, all right? Hi, Master. Hi. It's been a long time to see you since the last time I talked to you. Oh, we will see each other some other time and soon. <laughs> um, I have a question regarding our precepts. Our precepts saying that um, we have to be vegetarian without using eggs, but uh, using cheese or dairy products is fine. But uh, recently, lately, we are trying so much to, trying to stress uh, not to use animal products. But my uh, question is, um, so if our brother or sister eat uh, cheese or milk, are they breaking the precepts? No, no, they are not, because uh, for using cheese or milk, uh, we don't have to kill any animals, fine. But uh, it is not good for their health.